I've talked previously, so I'm going to give a brief introduction and, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what this actually means. And so the, the history of Sapphire in one slide is that the need for identity federation was identified by the community in South Africa. That was a, a meeting of the uh, statutory research councils and the universities sometime in 2014. And it's now 2017 and these things take a long time to get going. And that appears to be a common story in federations around the world. They, they all start out with this, yes, this is a good idea, let's do it, let's, and then it peters out. Um, but having done that, we got to a point where last year we had a number of universities get frustrated by the speed at which things were going and agreed to provide some seed funding. Uh, and specifically, eight institutions agreed to fund effectively the federation for two years. And that kind of spurred quite a lot of motion, including um, employing some staff, me. The, the federation was initially piloted as a full mesh federation, but the architecture decision was changed to hub and, and spoke. And I'll, and I'll speak a little bit about that because that is the elephant in the room. Um, where we are currently, we have a hub and spoke architecture deployed. It's up and functioning and it sees logins every day. Um, admittedly, not a lot of logins as, as yet, but there are a growing number every single day, which is great. Um, the transition from the original pilot federation is underway. In fact, it's, it's mostly complete. We're trying to catch up the stragglers at the moment. We have a, a roadmap that shows where we are, but also where we intend to be in two years' time. It is now a supported service. It has full-time staff. It has a service desk that theoretically knows what to do when you phone them. Um, and the big milestone, we were admitted as a member of the Edugain Interfederation community in February. And I'll talk about that as, as well a little bit. But we published metadata the next day. So the day after the Edugain um, steering group voted us in, we had our first login via Edugain. Okay. The elephant in the room, why I have been spoke. So if you look at federation architectures around the world, there are roughly 70 something federations and only about five of them are hub and spoke. The remainder are all full mesh. And so the question has to be, why did South Africa build a new federation when the rest of the world is, that is a hub and spoke, when the rest of the world is building a full mesh federation? Um, and for, for us, the answer comes down to two things. The one is reducing the barrier to entry for identity providers. So we recognize that we live in a skills poor region. And, and in fact, the, the Saigaya people are, are trying to address that, but it is the reality on the ground. We have institutions who don't understand what SAML is, who don't understand what identity management is. So one of the key constraints that we had to deal with was how do we reduce the barriers to entry? So what do we do to allow the, the lowest common denominator in as an identity provider. So by acting as a, a hub and spoke, we can forgive many evils. If you have an active directory and you support ADFS, traditionally the SAML world doesn't like you, but our hub will make that go away. If you're running um, G Suite um, apps for education, um, they have a SAML provider that doesn't interoperate, but our hub likes it. Um, and so the, the key thing was to say, well, what have you got that's managing identity on the ground right now, and how can we leverage that? It does allow the possibility for us to build, for instance, LDAP gateways. We haven't done that. We might consider that. Um, but it, it's really about making this easy for identity providers. It, it's also about being able to do protocol translation. So an LDAP gateway would be protocol translation from LDAP to SAML, but but also protocol translation from OpenID, for instance. The other thing was that globally, one of the problems with federation is access to attributes. So it's all very well saying yes or no, this person is a member of my institution, but what is their name? Because getting names out of some identity federations is impossible. 
let alone anything useful like, you know, what does this person actually do at the institution? And so one of the things we wanted to try and address was a, a more consistent answer to providing attributes to service providers, at least to South African service providers from South African institutions, because that's the sphere we can control. Um, but at a, at a larger extent also to some service providers in EduGain, so we honor, um, there is an entity category called research and scholarship, which is used to tag service providers that meet certain requirements about um, conducting scholarly research. And the Federation completely honor, honors that. But we can only do that as a Federation-wide thing because we have a hub sitting in the middle. And so we kind of ignored the rest of the world and ignored this idea of building a full mesh because we thought that this hub and spoke model made sense in South Africa. It might not always make sense. It might not make sense in future. But right now, it makes sense. So one of the interesting things is that globally, federations are converging into a hybrid model anyway. So. Um, very quickly, that's what's on the ground now for virtual machines. I'm not going to go into any detail. There's a, a road map showing how this expands. So the, the important thing is at the moment we have no resiliency and in the long term we have a fully resilient scale out that, that allows us to, to handle more traffic in that without rebuilding what we already have. And so at this point I want to pause briefly for a bit of reflection. The technology in this stuff is easy. It might seem complicated, but really it is the easy thing. The two previous talkers talked about policy. That's the difficult stuff. Policy, lawyers, um, understanding privacy legislation, understanding international jurisdictions, that's the stuff that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. It turns out that that effort is not wasted because when it comes to joining things like Eduro, um, Edugain, that is all they actually care about. They don't care about the technology. The technology, the current version three of the Edugain constitution doesn't mention SAML at all. They care about whether you have a participation policy and they care about how you manage that relationship. And so it was an enormous investment. I've spoken to more lawyers than I have IT people. Um, I'm still talking to lawyers because the biggest barrier to adoption now is not the technology, it's the lawyers. Um, but it's also an area where globally the, the Research Federation community has done a lot of work in building standard templates that we, we can reuse. And so anybody who's trying to do this, don't reinvent this wheel. This is a wheel that has been invented and you can learn a lot from the, the Federation community. So the important question that, that really is, what does all of this mean? We, we have an identity federation, we have membership in edu, EduGain. What does that mean for research and edu, education in this country? This is kind of the ideal. You know, one identity to rule them all. Um, I have a single login, I use it everywhere. It's probably unrealistic. In, in the real world, I'm probably going to have a number of identities going forward, but, but what we'd like to do is reduce that number of identities. So the, 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 the idea is to, to really reduce the identities. Um, if you're an identity provider, simplified integration. You integrate with one federation instead of lots of little service providers. If you work that out in hours spent by your staff on that, that reduces costs. It allows you to reuse your existing identity management infrastructure. So certainly in this country, every university is doing identity management because it's a statutory obligation. Um, most of them have over time built up that identity management um, infrastructure into their IT infrastructure. So let's reuse that. Let's, let's take that effort and, and realize that that data is good data. If you're a university, you know who your students are, you've seen an ID book because the law says that you've seen an ID book. So let's leverage on, on that. Um, it, a federation provides a standardized way to release attributes. So federations typically have a small vocabulary of attributes. Um, the Sapphire Federation supports 13. Um, but those are quite well defined. They use standard OIDs. The, the definitions of them are quite well defined. We know what we mean when we talk about given name. There is a, a definition for what a given name is. So between institutions, we, we know what we're getting about. So it provides an easy way for us to provide similar information. 
And again, my two predecessors have mentioned the Poppy Act. So one of the things Federation helps do is helps with compliance with the Poppy Act. Sapphire, because it's hub and spoke, it can handle consent. So we introduced mandatory consent. That, that means that identity providers don't need to worry about the consent thing because the Federation will collect and maintain that consent for you. Um, consent is a requirement in the Poppy Act. Um, so from a legal perspective, we end up being a, um, an operator on behalf of, of the data processor who is the university. Um, this is all complicated legal terminology. Um, but quite frankly, this is stuff that university managers care about. This is stuff IT departments care about. This is not stuff that researchers care about. They don't care about the law. I, I, I hear laughter, but it's true. <laughs> if you're a service provider, okay, there is already high quality identity information out there. We talked about the legislative requirements. Let's reuse it. Um, reduce support costs because we outsource the function of password changes, which is typically the biggest problem for, for a service provider support desk, to the identity provider. Don't talk to us, go and talk to your university. It's great. Again, it helps comply with, with privacy law because there is consent collected. It also reduces, surprisingly, the amount of personal information you need, and it keeps it up to date, which helps lower your risk and increase your compliance. Um, a lot of service providers like the fact that access is revoked when people cease to be eligible. There are no ghost users in this system, or there should not be ghost users. And ultimately, it improves user experience. We live in a world where users are, are used to federated login. Every time you click login with Facebook or login with Google, you're doing federated login. It's what users expect. And so we're, we're perpetuating that experience into the research and education world. Apart from the last point, it's really not stuff that the academics and researchers care about. It's stuff that the people who operate services care about. If you're a library, this is a whole new world for controlling electronic resources providing better access to journals and things like that in ways that were not possible before. We, we, have, we live in a world where libraries still use um, reverse proxies to get around campus IP ranges. Um, that's dying horribly because every journal provider is switching to SSL and there's a certificate problem. This provides a much easier way to manage those logins. And, and in fact, I'm going to the Sandlick conference later in the year to specifically address this with libraries. But again, something the library director cares about. What we get to at the end of the day is, if you're a researcher or an academic or a student, this is immediate access to an existing range of global services. There are currently about 1,400 services through EduGain that are accessible. They will all work to various degrees depending on, on licensing and things, but at a simplistic level, you can log into them immediately. One username and password to remember. I don't have to create an account over there on Cambridge and, and another one on ORCID and another one over there. I have one account, my institutional account. Um, I have better control over my personal information because I know where it's going, I know who it's being sent to, and I consent. And I can withdraw consent at any point. And importantly, the, the most important thing, it fosters global collaboration. So we don't live in islands anymore. Research doesn't happen in one country. We, we, need, we need to do this in, in a holistic global way. Um, and so that's really, for me, what this is all about. It's all about enabling everything else you're doing. We're, we're the kind of plumbing that happens in the background. OK, but don't take my word for this. There was a. A research group called Federated Identity Management for Research that did a whole lot of, uh, this, this group was comprised of um, big names like CERN and EGI and, and things like that. A and they did surveys of researchers and asked what researchers wanted and, and how this stuff all fitted into what researchers needed. That research was done in about 2012, and, and what's there is a summary of, of the findings. Um, federated technologies are good. Take advantage of them. I think in Africa, we've been quite slow at doing that. 
Um, the infrastructure needs to be improved to take advantage of federated technologies. That's what Saigaya has been trying to do. Um, relying on older models of local account creation and IP ACLs is easier. It really is much easier, but it's a very narrow-sighted view of the world. It's a view in which all your users exist on your campus. They never uh, roam, they never go to another campus, and everything you do is in your little island. Um, and I think that the last thing is, is quite key. If you can't fix it yourself, and you can't, because this is a hugely complicated area, facilitate the efforts of groups you can, who can. So Sapphire is one group who can, but it's not the only group that can. The Dorisa people are doing work in this area, and, and so on. So don't try and reinvent the wheel yourself. Um, and that is kind of where I'm going to to end off. Thank you very much, Guy. Let's give Guy a great hand for his presentation.